one call suddenly opens up extraordinary numbers of possibilities and you're dealing at some point with this proliferation of calls which meant that the choreographic variety yeah. is is, is well, when Burleson issued his first library dictionary of callers of calls I think he had 4,000 calls in it and that was in in the mid-60s uh, by the time we got done, I think Burleson's last edition had over 8,000 calls. Clearly insane. You, can, you, you can't use these. Yeah, even challenge dances. That's right. <laughs> and, and so we had a, had a process of sorting out as we went to the first Call Lab meeting in 1974, when the, the first one when we brought people together, a big group, the New England Dancers Association had a meeting attended by 2,000 dancers. 2,000. And they started a petition, which we took to Call Lab with more than 2,000 signatures on it, asking us to get some kind of control over new calls. The dancers rebelled. Were rebelled because they never knew. They wanted to be experienced dancers, and the skilled dancers were the ones that knew the calls. So they were the ones that went to more dances, and they were the ones that went to the traveling callers. Uh, and they desperately wanted to, and they couldn't, couldn't keep up. because there was no way to know which ones were going to be there. That what that's what led to Call a Lab in making the list. And everybody says Call a Lab ruined square dancing, or a lot of people say well, we ruined square dancing by making these standard lists. What we knew at Call a Lab in those first meetings was the lists were already out there. They were being made by others in several locations around the country. Uh, was one in New England had divided all of these all of, a whole bunch of calls into eight levels, and that was already done before the first call on that meeting. What we knew we had to do was to get a grip on it before it went crazy, and we were able to do that. We we did indeed get, set what became a worldwide standard yeah. list. Yeah. And we then had to account for because the flood of new calls was still there. So we set up methods of introducing new ones, trying them out, adding them to this list or that list, deciding where they should be. But that was a major function of Call of Lab's early days was to get a grip on that new call production. It took us about a decade, but by the late 80s, there were no more new calls. Yeah. That, that wasn't anybody's interest anymore. Right. But we already had 8,000 of them. So. That's enough. To <laughs> That's <with>. enough. 